makes you like really aware of the problem and not just here in the United States but everywhere by showing like the food, the food security it like gives a more like definite this is how it is in this country so you can like better understand their situation and possibly like what you could do to help. The website's very interactive and it made it interesting to learn. Senator John Hoven from the state of North Dakota, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, Spencer. Now, first off, can you tell us some things that are unique to North Dakota agriculture? We're one of the most diverse ag states in the country. We uh, lead the nation, I think, in 14 different major commodities, things as diverse as honey uh, and also durum, uh, which, of course, is po uh, we make pasta out of durum. Uh, but we have a tremendous... Uh, egg uh, industry and uh, not only crops but we raise a lot of cattle as well so uh, we produce food fuel and fiber for the nation and I love to say that um, nobody does it better than our farmers and our ranchers the highest quality lowest cost food supply in the world uh, thanks to our, our great folks in production ag now, rail availability has been an issue nationwide, but it has especially hit North Dakota the hardest. I know you and your uh, cohort, Senator Heitkamp, have been working very hard on this issue. What are you planning on doing moving forward into 2015? Well, of course, uh, the Department of Federal Department of Transportation will have to bring out the new rules. FIMSA will have the new rules uh, for um, moving crude by train, which uh, really it has to be, I think will be and has to be a comprehensive approach um, that covers uh, preventing spills, um, mitigating when you have a, an accident or a spill of any kind, and um, then uh, response, emergency response. And so you'll see those new rules come out. They're very important in terms of giving the industry certainty so that um, manufacturers can produce the new cars and meet the requirements for strength and safety and so that the uh, shippers can uh, get those cars uh, online. Um, but you know, this is, it's got to be a comprehensive response, ongoing, that involves all three things, prevention, mitigation, and emergency response. The other part, of course, the big uh, part of the equation that's so important uh, for our farmers is because of the tremendous increase in the volume of crude oil that's being moved. We now produce uh, 1.2 million barrels a day of oil in North Dakota. About 700,000 barrels a day moves by rail. We need more pipelines as well as more rail, a bigger railroad, if you will, more track, more sidings, as well as more you know, uh, locomotives, rail cars, people, uh, but a bigger railroad and our road system so that we can move more product. We have a tremendously growing economy in North Dakota and so our ag products have been backed up as a result of that and our shipping costs for our farmers have gone up. So we need to make sure that we have the pipelines as well as additional rail facilities so that we can adequately move our um, ag products to market and that's going to be an ongoing effort uh, not only working with the railroads but anything and everything we can do to make sure that our shippers have access to timely uh, and uh, the most cost-effective rail shipments possible and that we don't have these backlogs. So th that'll be an ongoing effort uh, over the next year. We we'll spent a lot of time on it this year, but not done yet. More to do. Now, looking forward, what do you see as some key <coughs> issues for Senate Ag policy in relation to agriculture in the next Congress? One of the first things that we have to do is, and this, again, ongoing effort, is make sure that we're implementing the Farm Bill. Uh, in a farmer-friendly way and doing it as effectively as possible. Our farmers will make a five-year election as to whether they, they select PLC or ARC. We need to make sure that we work with them so they have the information they need to make those decisions and then work with F uh, FSA and uh, NRCS so that it's implemented. USDA implements that farm bill in a way that really works for our farmers and ranchers. Um, that also includes RMA, Risk Management Agency, Brendan Willis, and the whole crop insurance um, implementation. And one of the things we worked very hard uh, in the Farm Bill, and I was one of the conferees that helped write it, uh, was to make sure that we strengthen crop insurance. So that's a big part of the implementation as well. So implementing the Farm Bill is one of the first priorities. Other areas, waters of the U.S. I mean, that's a huge problem 
That's an example of overreach, regulatory overreach by the EPA. That needs to be rescinded or defunded, and that's something I'm working on and believe will get done uh, in the next year. There are others as well. I can uh, go through the list, but those are certainly some of the uh, important priorities. Now, North Dakota is one of two states that in, the, in this most recent Congress had both of their senators on the Senate Agriculture Committee. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you think that is? Because North Dakota is one of the leading egg producing states in the country. Like I said, we're the leader in 14 different major commodities, but we produce many, many other farm commodities. Uh, food, food, fuel, and fiber not only raise crops, but produce a lot of uh, livestock. We're a big time ag producing state. And so it's only natural that we would have uh, certainly one and, and uh, you know, best case, both of our centers on, on Senate Ag. Now, being a senator is not your first, ter first term uh, representing the people of North Dakota. You also served as their governor for 10 years. So what was it that made you want to take the jump from governor of a state to senator of a state? Well, um, it's a tremendous honor um, serving as senator. It was certainly a tremendous honor serving as governor. I was in my third term, um, and I, so I'd been there 10 years as governor, and really felt that our state was, was doing well, growing, dynamic economy, uh, really leading the country in economic growth. Uh, ag's a huge part of that. Um, but our country really faces challenges some of the same challenges that our state faced when I became governor, and that was creating that, that good business climate that really enables our entrepreneurs and our small businesses to be successful and create jobs and opportunity for the people and, and, and generate a higher standard of living. That wasn't going on in our state. That's what I worked hard on to change. I think our state's doing great. Always more to do, but doing really well. But our nation's not, and so I want to bring that same approach where we build the kind of business climate that can really get our economy going, get jobs for our people, um, and at the same time then, uh, you bring good fiscal management, so you get the budget deficit under control and you reduce the debt. And that growing economy, not higher taxes, but that growing economy is what generates the revenue then to have a good highway bill, so we have good roads, strong support for our military. And the other thing is, uh, an approach that empowers people. So instead of all this regulatory burden that we see being put in place now by this administration, having uh, a regulatory environment that you know works in terms of making sure people and companies do things right, but that is certain and is straightforward and encourages investment and gives people choice and opportunity, whether it's healthcare or whether it's an energy plan or anything else. And I think that approach that empowers people is what we've got to get back to in this country. And I think we've gotten too much into a big government with too much regulation and taxation and kind of this centralized one fits all approach. We need to get back to really empowering the great people of this country to, to build our economy and build our future. Senator John Hoven from the state of North Dakota, thanks for joining us. Thanks, good to be with you.